Welcome. This video is a lesson from our DIY Pardot implementation course. If you're looking to get a new Pardot org set up and installed correctly, and you're looking for a little bit of extra help, consider taking our course. We'll walk through those steps with you in videos just like this one to make sure everything is installed and set up properly. I hope this video helps. The link is in the description below. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to update the DNS records for your email sending domain. So the first thing we need to do is bring up the right screen in Pardot so you can see what the expected records are. And then I'll explain a little bit about DNS and I'll show you in a DNS zone editor how you would update those records or add records in order to verify the domain with Pardot. So step one, let's take a look at the right screen. In Salesforce, click the app launcher and bring up the Pardot app so that you can then go to Pardot settings and click on domain management. So now we're on the domain management screen and there's two main areas. There's the email sending domains and tracker domains, and we can add multiple in each of these areas. Right now though, we're just gonna focus on the sending domain. And then in the next video, we'll go through the tracker domain. So the sending domain is important because this is the domain that the emails you're sending are coming from. So in my example here, I've already added hayesstudio.com. And just click that blue add new domain to write in anything that would come after the at symbol in your email address. So, you know, company.com, company.io, et cetera, that kind of thing. And what we need to do is we need to authorize Pardot to send emails on behalf of this domain. If we don't go through this process, and if by the time we're done with it, you're not seeing green check marks across these three spots here, then your chance of your email ending up in spam is much, much higher because that receiving server is getting that message. And then when it goes to check that message against what's publicly available related to that domain, it sees a mismatch and it doesn't know that Pardot is allowed to send from that domain. So it might be unauthorized email, it might be spam, and that's certainly going to send it into the spam folder or get it blocked altogether. So it's really important that we set up the sending domains here. And it's possible, like I mentioned, to add multiple sending domains. So if you have multiple brands that you're sending emails from within Pardot, you can do that just by clicking add new domain in the upper right and then going through these steps multiple times. So first off, what we need to do is add three records to your DNS settings. DNS stands for domain name system. It's essentially the way traffic gets routed through the internet so that when you type in somebody's email address, or their web address, say www.google.com, it knows what server to ping and where to pull back information that then loads up on your screen. And so what we need to do is add a few records to wherever your domain is managed so that we can authorize Pardot. So click expected DNS entries on the right-hand side, and you can see what those three entries are that Pardot is looking for. First of all, it's looking for the SPF. So that stands for Sender Policy Framework. Beneath that, we've got the domain key policy and the domain key. And because we put heystudio.com in for this domain, it's looking for a text record at the root, so at heystudio.com, with a value of v equals spf1, include aspmx.pardot, et cetera. And it's also looking for, not at the top level, not at heystudio.com, but at underscore domain key dot heystudio.com, it's looking for this value. And same thing here, it's looking for this value. If we have those three records added to your domain, then Pardot is going to turn green across these three different areas here. And your deliverability is gonna be much, much better than when you're sending emails from the system. So in order to add these records, you need to get to your DNS zone editor or wherever your DNS is managed. So typically that's wherever you purchased your domain. If you bought it from GoDaddy or from Bluehost or Namecheap or something like that, that's most likely where you can manage your DNS records. Now, sometimes though, it's actually in a different place. Sometimes you register domain on one website and then you end up managing those records somewhere else. And so if this is completely new to you, or if you don't have access to those systems, we also have an email template that we've written out for you. And you can just drop in the values that you see here in Pardot into that email template and send it off to whoever your IT person is or your web developer or website manager. And they should be familiar with that and know how to add those records. But let's go ahead and add them ourselves. 
So I'm in a C panel here where I can manage my DNS records, but this would look probably pretty similar whether you're on GoDaddy or Namecheap or, or something else along those lines. And what you can see here are different records that I could filter by, C names, A records, text records, which is what we're really interested in at this point. And beneath here, you can see a bunch of these different records that are on this domain. So the first thing I'm gonna look for is to see if there's an existing SPF record. So I'm gonna filter everything I've got here by the TXT type records and just to check like is there anything here that says v equals spf1 this right here doesn't look like there is now the reason for that is because the spf record is a little bit unique you can only have one of them in your dns settings otherwise it won't work so if you already have one that starts with v equals spf1 don't just create another text record instead what you want to do is copy out this include statement here just that include dot aspmx.par.com, copy that, and then paste it into your existing SPF record right before the tilde and put a little space in there. And I'll actually show you exactly how that would look once we add this record for ourselves. So in our case here, we don't have an SPF record. So just click add record. And this is at the top level domain here. So I'll type in heystudio.com. You can leave the, the TTL at default. Whatever is put in there automatically is just fine. And then for the type of record, make sure that this is TXT. This is really important. And then I'm gonna copy that value there and I'll paste it right in there. And then I'll hit save record. There you have it, heystudio.com, TXT record with a value of V equals SPF1. Then we've got our include statement there and then it ends with tilde all. Now, if this was already there and let's say that this said include aspmx.google.com or there was some other text in there essentially authorizing another system to send emails from this domain, we don't wanna create another SPF record. Instead, what you would do is just copy the include part of our statement. So from include to the end of .com, go to your editor and instead of adding a new record, edit the existing one add a little extra space here and then paste that in there. So what we have is the first include statement, then a space, then the next include statement, the one we just added, then a space and then tilde all to finish it out. Obviously I'm gonna remove that because it doesn't need to be duplicative, but that's how you want it to look if you need to update an existing SPF record. All right, so that one is added. Let's add another record. So this one, the domain is not Hey Studio. It's actually underscore domain key dot So I'm gonna copy that first, put that in the first part here for the domain, make sure that's a text record, and then come back here and we'll copy that domain key policy as well and paste that right in there, save record. And let's add that third record. So same idea, copy the domain, paste it in there, make sure it's a text record, and then copy this long value here. Now, one thing to note is that a lot of these editors, they're a little bit different. So sometimes you're not actually writing in the full domain, like you can see here, it goes from the subdomain all the way to heystudio.com. Sometimes the heystudio.com part is already filled in for you. And the only thing it's looking for is everything before that heystudio.com. So we'd be looking for, you know, 200608 underscore domain key is what it would be asking you for. So just pay close attention to that to make sure that you're not accidentally putting this record at, you know, heystudio.com.heystudio.com because then it would be in the wrong spot and it, it wouldn't show up and then hit save record. We've got our three records added to the system. If we come back here and click check DNS entries, we can see that domain key policy has verified, but the domain key itself has not yet verified. And it can take time. It could take up to a day for these DNS changes to propagate throughout the internet. And so you might click check DNS entries immediately and you might get an error. I'd give it an extra five or 10 minutes and then come back here and check again. I've never had it take 24 hours, but just know that it could potentially take that long. I'm gonna come back here and just double check what we wrote. This looks pretty good to me. So let's hit check DNS entries again. There we go. See, it was just a little bit delayed on the domain key record. Now that I've hit check DNS entries, all three of those are verified. We are good to go. Pardot can send an email from anything that ends in at heystudio.com. It's gonna have a high reliable deliverability because we've got this all verified. So that takes care of us setting up the email sending domain. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about the tracker domains and walk you through verifying those ones. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson. That was a lesson from our DIY Pardot implementation course. If you'd like more videos similar to it, 
consider clicking the link in the description below or going to academy.rotive.io. Thanks for watching.